Uh, so then the <coughs> uh, last Dhamma talk, uh, we were discussing about uh, Sampajanya, uh, this quality of clear comprehension uh, that uh, must accompany, uh, according to the Buddha's instruction, uh, it must accompany uh, every moment of noting. Okay, so every single moment uh, when you note an object, uh, that noting mind must be accompanied by this quality of clear comprehension, uh, sampajanya. <clears throat> yeah, so as we mentioned, uh, this sampajanya, uh, it is synonymous with uh, panya uh, or wisdom. Okay, so... Yeah. So as we explain also, uh, this Sampajanya, this word Sampajanya uh, is derived from the root word Nya. Nya yeah? meaning knowing okay? or to know. Okay? Mm. So basically, uh, Sampajanya Apanya uh, is knowing. Uh, it is a mode of knowing, uh, wisdom. Uh, panya uh, is simply uh, a mode of knowing. Okay? You simply know. Okay? Uh, knowing means uh, without thinking, uh, without analyzing, uh, without pondering, uh, and certainly without any imagination. Okay? Uh, you're supposed to see things as they are. Okay? And that's wisdom. Okay? So, so it's a mode of knowing. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So there's no and without any without involving any uh, uh, intellectual exercise, uh, thoughts, uh, pondering, thinking, and so on. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But wisdom is not knowing uh, in an ordinary manner. Uh, in a uh, superficial manner. Okay? It's not knowing things uh, superficially on the surface. Okay? So, <clears throat> as denoted uh, by the intensifier suffix pa, uh, so you do the root na, uh, sorry, to the, root, to the root word nya, uh, knowing, and you add the intensifier suffix pa. Uh, and this suffix pa, uh, uh, it denotes uh, yeah, a, a deep, penetrative kind of knowing. You know, it intensifies, it modifies the meaning of nya, uh, knowing. Okay? So, by intensifying it. Uh, so, it's not an ordinary mode of knowing. Uh, it's a deep, penetrative mode of knowing. Okay? It's knowing things distinctly clearly, precisely, exactly, as they are. Okay? Mm. Yeah. So this is the meaning of wisdom, uh, or panya. Okay? Mm. So to panya, uh, then you add another prefix, sam. Uh, so you get sam panya. Okay? And then uh, through further uh, grammatical transformation, uh, you get Sampajanya. Okay, so, and this prefix sam, uh, it further modifies the meaning. Okay, so, uh, basically, it's knowing deeply, uh, knowing penetratively, clearly, distinctly, and so on. Okay, but you add another prefix sam, uh, and then. Uh, it modifies the meaning further. Uh, so, uh, as we discuss uh, in reference to the sub-commentary, uh, so this prefix sum uh, uh, can be understood uh, in three different ways. Okay? So, first is sama uh, pajananto, okay? so knowing correctly. Okay, knowing correctly, exactly, uh, precisely. 
Yeah? So how do you know correctly? Okay? So you know correctly, precisely, exactly uh, by noting in such a way, making effort to note in such a way uh, so that the knowing, uh, I mean, the noting is so precise uh, that the noting mind is able to uh, distinguish clearly uh, each individual uh, mental and physical nature uh, that is present uh, within our experience. Okay. So, without mixing them up, without mixing all these different mental, physical nature together. Uh, so, every single experience uh, that we know, okay, whether seeing or hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, uh, knowing, uh, thinking, feeling, and so on. Okay. All these experiences, uh, they actually compose of uh, various uh, physical or mental nature. Okay. Various nama, rupa, dhamma. Okay. Mm. But when we do not uh, practice vipassana meditation, we do not exert the mind to not precisely Usually, all these various nama, rupa, dhamma, uh, they are all mixed together, all these various nature. Yeah? Uh, so, like for example, uh, when you are uh, rising, falling, let's say rising, uh, so there's a stiffness, a tightness, a tension there. Uh, there is the feeling connected with that uh, movement. Uh, uh, there's a mental contact, uh, there's a knowing, uh, so there are all these various uh, mental, physical nature present. Okay? Usually when we do not practice Vipassana meditation, we don't see so clearly. They are all mixed together uh, in one whole salad bowl. Uh, and then we identify, uh, usually we identify this whole thing, uh, this is my abdomen. <laughs> Uh, or I know my abdomen uh, rising. Yeah? So you identify. Okay? So you, know, you kind of overlay uh, a concept of a person uh, onto this whole experience. Uh, a concept of an abdomen and a person knowing the abdomen uh, rising. Okay? So, <clears throat> yeah. So it all become confused, uh, all mixed up together in a confused bunch. Uh, so you don't see things as they really are. Okay? Mm. Uh, and so when you practice Vipassana meditation, uh, uh, through the method of noting uh, precisely, clearly, uh, every single moment, uh, body in the body, feeling in the feeling, and so on. Uh, so... Uh, you can able to uh, when the mind has been sufficiently de developed, uh, so that's clear knowledge uh, developed and then sharp enough, and uh, then you're able to distinguish clearly each and every mental and physical nature uh, that are present in the experience. You can tell them apart, okay? so yeah, they are not mixed together. Uh, so. Actually, they are mixed together. It's just that because of the clear knowledge, and then clear knowledge is able to pick them apart, yeah. one by one. Okay, mm. then you see that you see clearly. Yeah, there's just dhammas in mean, every single experience of rising and falling. They are just dhammas, just uh, nature, mental, physical nature. Uh, there's no person, no being. Uh, uh, no self, uh, no soul, uh, just dhammas, just nature, uh, mental, physical nature. Mm. <clears throat> so such precise, clear knowing, uh, distinguishing clearly uh, all these various mental, physical nature, uh, this is called sama pajananto, uh, knowing correctly. Okay? Mm. So uh, this is clear comprehension. Mm. Yeah. 
So usually you don't practice vipassana, you don't have this clear comprehension. Yeah? So uh, all mixed together. Yeah? There's a person, a being uh, is present. Okay? So you overlay uh, a layer of concept, uh, uh, which is not real, on top of what is real. And you take that concept as something real. Yeah? Uh, you think that I really exist, my abdomen really exists. Yeah? So Mm, that's that's called uh, unclear <laughs> comprehension. Okay, asampajanya. Okay, uh, so when you develop a uh, clear knowledge, uh, then you have clear comprehension. Uh, then you can see clearly. Okay, that's just dhamma, just mental physical nature. Okay? Mm. Yeah. Then, uh, or another meaning of the prefix sum uh, is. Samantato Bajananto, knowing clearly all around. So, meaning, and this means that you not only discern clearly all these various mental physical nature, but you also discern them in all their various aspects, various manner of occurrence. So, uh, so, for example, uh, you, when you're not rising, falling, uh, you can see clearly, for example, there's a physical nature of tightness. There's tightness, 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 tightness. Uh, when you're not, uh, so it's one tightness after another, after another. Okay, when your mind is clear enough, uh, you can see the manner of arising and disappearing. Each tightness, uh, it arises, it disappears. Okay. And then another tightness arises, disappear. Another tightness arises, disappear. Huh? It's a manner of occurrence. Okay. The tightness itself is called sabhava lakana. Okay. The specific characteristic of the wind element. Huh? So, uh, so sometimes you can even see the mental nature as tightness, the knowing of the tightness. Uh, this knowing is also uh, sabhava lakana. Uh, it's the specific, unique characteristic of the consciousness, okay, citta. Okay. Mm. Uh, uh, so this is sabhava lakana, and then you see this sabhava lakana, this mental physical nature, uh, the manner arising, disappearing, uh, the tightness arising, disappearing, knowing arising, disappearing. Moment by moment. Okay, it is called Sankata Lakana. Okay, arising and disappearing. Okay, conditioned nature. Okay, all things that are conditioned, they arise and disappear uh, due to conditions. Okay, so when the suitable conditions are present, uh, they arise. Okay, the condition disappear, they also disappear. Uh, that's the nature of all things that are conditioned. Five aggregates, they are all conditioned, so they all arise, disappear. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, then from, uh, from there also you discern the nature of Samanya Lakana uh, by continuously noting the nature arising, disappearing. Uh, you also discern their nature, uh, how they are impermanent, how they are uh, suffering, how they are non self. Okay. Mm. Uh, no, so knowing uh, in all this aspect, knowing all this mental physical nature in all these various aspects, all these various manner of occurrence, uh, this is called samantato pajananto. Okay? Knowing clearly all around. And, uh, so this also uh, is a kind of clear comprehension. <clears throat> okay? And then last one is samam pajananto. Knowing clearly by oneself. Yeah, so this means uh, uh, this is a way of the com for, uh, of the commentator uh, to to slip in uh, the instruction uh, that no one uh, can help you to develop this clear comprehension. Uh, you yourself must develop it yourself. Okay. Yeah, Samma means by oneself, knowing by oneself. So uh, every yogi uh, must make a personal effort 
in order to develop this clear comprehension. Uh, and you have to make effort to develop it continuously uh, so that the insight that is developed uh, is able to reach deeper and deeper, uh, becomes clearer and clearer, uh, more and more mature, uh, is able to reach uh, higher and higher distinction in knowledge uh, until we arrive at uh, highest knowledge, uh, Magapala, Nyana. Okay? Mm. Yeah. So basically, Sampajanya, clear comprehension, sim uh, it simply means this clear insight uh, into the nature of mental physical phenomena as they arise uh, within our experience. Okay? Mm. Uh, so, uh, so this quality of clear comprehension, okay? must accompany, according to the Buddha's instruction, Satipatthana instruction, it must be accompanying every single moment of noting mind. Every time you note, this quality of clear comprehension must be present. So as we mentioned, so this quality of clear comprehension is very important part of Vipassana meditation. Yeah, because uh, Vipassana meditation, uh, as uh, the Buddha described it in the Satipatthana Sutta, it means Sati Sampajanya, okay? mindfulness together uh, with clear comprehension. Okay, yeah, so Vipassana meditation, uh, basically it is Sati Sampajanya, mindfulness together with clear comprehension. Okay, so. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So when you practice, uh, there must be these two qualities together. Yeah. So mindfulness alone, uh, it only establishes the mind in samadhi concentration. Okay. Mm. So, uh, which is the samatha aspect of the practice. Okay. Mm. Uh, this, of course, is not alone, not enough. Uh, this alone is not enough. Okay. So. <clears throat> so, because uh, in vipassana meditation, uh, there are these two aspects: uh, both samatha and vipassana must be present. Okay, so so mindfulness uh, represents the samatha aspect. It establishes the mind firmly on the object. Uh, in this way, it helps to establish the mind in focus, attention. Uh, so that is it, this is the samatha aspect of it. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, but these two alone, uh, this mindfulness and concentration, sati samadhi, uh, uh, they must be well directed. Okay, once they are established, they must be well directed uh, in order to explore uh, into uh, the nature of the mental physical phenomena. Okay, and sabbawa lakana. Sankata Lakana, Samanya Lakana. So they must be directed yeah, to explore into this various nature of the mental physical phenomena. Okay? And only through such exploration yeah, will there be Sampajanya, this clear comprehension uh, about the nature of the Nama Rupa. Mm. Only then yeah, will there be Vipassana, uh, insight. Okay, mm. so this is the sampajanya. This is the vipassana aspect of the practice. Okay, mm. so there are these two aspects of the practice, eh? both samatha and the vipassana aspect of the practice. Eh? Both must be present. Okay, mm. so the samatha aspect, eh? the mindfulness, the concentration, eh? the effort. Eh? So it holds the mind steady. Uh, on the object, okay? it establishes the mind on the object, hold it steady there, uh, and focus attention on it, uh, so that the mind is not distracted away. Okay? And that's the samatha aspect. Uh, then the vipassana aspect, I penetrate deep into the object uh, in order to 
reveal the true nature uh, of the object. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so this is the two aspects. Yeah. Sati, Sampajanya, Ta and Vipassana. Mm, okay, yeah, so there must be these two aspects yeah, of the practice, yeah, samatha and vipassana. Mm. But of course, yeah, of these two, the, most, the more important one is sampajanya, yeah, clear comprehension. Yeah? Because without clear comprehension, clear comprehension is the vipassana itself. Yeah, it's the insight yeah, that penetrates you know, the nature of the nama rupa. Okay? Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is the meaning of sampajanya, huh? clear comprehension. Okay. Now, having described uh, <laughs> the nature of clear comprehension, huh? now some yogis say, "Ah, yeah, bante is very difficult. <laughs> it's too difficult." <laughs> How can we uh, not so precisely yeah, uh, to, to the extent that we are able to distinguish uh, each individual uh, mental and physical nature that is present uh, in our experience? Uh, so mm, even this alone already sounds so difficult. Uh, uh, to resolve your yeah, experience, uh, seeing, hearing, smelling, and so on resolve it uh, into uh, this various mental physical nature <clears throat> okay. this alone already sounds so difficult and uh, what more uh, to discern uh, each and every of this mental physical nature arising and disappearing uh, the nature of impermanent suffering and non-self uh, so uh, so when they see this when they hear this they say ah, impossible <laughs> It cannot be done, <laughs> right? So, uh, when you have such thought, uh, you already defeat yourself. <laughs> okay. So, mm, uh, when you think like this, oh, it cannot be done. Uh, you already put a barrier in your mind. Uh, so, uh, so who is it that block you? You yourself block yourself uh, because of your lack of confidence. Uh, so. Mm. When you practice the Dhamma, when you practice especially Vipassana meditation, yeah, you must practice with confidence. Yeah? Confidence in yourself, in your ability. Yeah? Confidence in the Dhamma. Yeah? Uh, the confidence in yourself that you are able to carry out this practice yeah? uh, to the completion. Okay? Mm. Yeah. The fact that uh, in this life, uh, you have the opportunity to come across uh, the Dhamma, uh, the Buddha's teaching, and not just any ordinary Dhamma, Vipassana Dhamma. Uh, uh, so and that shows that uh, uh, in your past life, you have uh, somehow have some connection uh, with this practice. Okay? You must have done it before in your past life. Uh, so that this life, uh, your mind, uh, maybe unconsciously or consciously, uh, you search for this <laughs> practice, you know, and somehow you found it. Uh, uh, you know? uh, it's not by chance that you come, come across this practice of Satipatthana Vipassana Dhamma uh, in this life. Okay, so mm, there are so many people in the world. How many people? Act? <laughs> actually have a chance to learn this in this life. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, you have some certain karma uh, that you have done in your past life. Yeah? You have some connection with this practice. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Not just come across this practice, but have the interest to actually come and practice. Yeah? There are many people uh, who have come across this practice also. But no interest. You know, some people when I speak to them, you know, about ordinary dharma, everyday dharma, how to live your life, <laughs> sila, huh? 
uh, how to live your life properly uh, as a good human being. Or oh, they're very interested. They listen with rapt attention. Uh, usually, that's sometimes that's how I start the Dhamma talk. Uh, but the moment uh, I started with this, and then I slowly shift to vipassana. Uh, the moment I shift to vipassana, I said I lose them already. <laughs> Everything I say fly past their head. <laughs> they don't hear anything. <laughs> Some of them even, uh, Cassie, Cassie, uh, get up, slowly get up, uh, walk away when nobody is looking. <laughs> uh, Some people like this uh, don't even want to listen. Uh, but you all uh, not only want to listen, uh, but also want to practice. So, yeah, that means you have this affinity with this practice. Yeah, that means somehow you have the ability yeah, to do this practice. Okay? So, so, you must have confidence in yourself. Okay? So, and also in the Dhamma, yeah, in the ability of this practice of the Dhamma uh, to bring about yeah, the the result uh, that is mentioned uh, by the Buddha. Uh, after all, the Buddha, I mean, the, sorry, the Dhamma uh, is Swakato, right? Uh, Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo, right? Uh, it is well expounded by the Buddha. Okay, well expounded means uh, it is precisely and clearly laid out in such a way that if you follow it, Carefully, diligently, uh, uh, it will bring about uh, the result that it is intended to uh, bring about. Okay? Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So you must practice uh, with a lot of confidence, both in yourself and in the Dhamma. Then only yeah, will you be able to reach uh, great heights in your practice. Uh, you say cannot la, cannot la. <laughs> year after year, so cannot la, cannot la. <laughs> uh, then, uh, then you always remember at that level. Always remain at that level. Of cannot la. Uh, you say I can, I can. Uh, then, uh, with that confidence, you put in effort. Yeah, faith, yeah, confidence leads to effort. Okay, only if you have confidence, then you put in effort. You cannot la, cannot la. You hold yourself back. Yeah, you don't put in as much effort as you are supposed to put in into the practice. Yeah, so you hold yourself back. Hmm? Mm. So, mm. yeah. So all this uh, knowledge is, uh, is of clear comprehension. Uh, when we describe it, it may sound impossible uh, at first. Okay. So if you have not experienced it before, uh, it sounds impossible, right? Yeah. In the I think Melinda Panha, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's mentioned that uh, the Buddha did something uh, that is very difficult. Uh, to do, yeah? that is, uh, he is able to tell about all these various mental states yeah? that is present yeah? in your experience. Okay, so they say it is. They gave a simile that it is like, you know, the water from various rivers. Yeah? So they all flow into the ocean. Okay, so, yeah. so the Buddha's ability. Uh, to tell apart all these various mental states, uh, this knowledge of clear comprehension is able to tell apart all these various mental states uh, with various uh, nature uh, and dhamma that is present. Uh, it is comparable to uh, a person taking a drop of water from the ocean, tasting it, and then able to tell this drop of water is from which river? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So when you hear this, uh, you say, oh, impossible. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. But those who have 
practice enough uh, and have experience uh, all these various stages of insight uh, into the nature of Nama Rupa. Uh, you've experienced it before, uh, even once, uh, you know uh, that it is not impossible. Okay, you realize when you experience it by yourself, uh, you realize you know, it is not impossible. Okay, you realize that actually all you need to do is to put in the, the necessary effort and uh, to follow uh, the basic instruction and to practice persistently, ardently. Uh, so uh, eventually, uh, as you persistently practice again and again, yeah. moment after moment after moment of noting, building up yeah, the practice, yeah, developing uh, the noting mind. Yeah. Eventually, yeah, when all the uh, necessary conditions yeah, develop, yeah, it means when not the noting mind is well balanced, yeah, when there's just the right degree of effort, uh, balance, uh, just the right degree of concentration. Uh, and there's just the right degree of faith, uh, balance by a right degree of clarity, uh, penetrative clarity. Uh, uh, so when all these are well balanced, uh, all the conditions come together, everything will fall in place. Uh, then when all, everything fall in place, uh, you cannot help but, but discern the nature you know, of this mental physical phenomena okay? as they are present in your experience. Okay? So they are all there all the time. Uh, all this uh, sabawa lakana, sankata lakana, samanya lakana, uh, this nature, they are present there. They are already there. Uh, they are already present in your experience. Okay, so uh, the mind just needs to be clear enough <laughs> in order to discern them. Uh, they are there already. Okay, so, um, so if you practice correctly, uh, then your mind cannot help but notice, discern all this various nature. Okay, so, uh, so how do you discern them? Uh, how do you develop this clear comprehension? Uh, Using the tool of satipatthana. So that means anupasana. So through continuous, precise noting, moment after moment after moment after moment, driven by ardent energetic effort. So gradually you develop this clear comprehension. So yeah, it's not difficult actually. Yeah, yeah, people think it's very difficult actually, yeah, especially the first insight. Yeah, first insight, second insight, yeah, third insight. Actually, it's not that difficult. Yeah. So, yeah, not difficult. All you need to do is you need effort. <laughs> Uh, persistent effort. Uh, so uh, you have to strive. Okay? Uh, apply yourself to the practice. Uh, apply the basic instruction to not, not precisely, not continuously, not clearly. Okay? So um, gradually everything uh, will fall into place. Uh, so uh, then you start to descend clearly. Okay? Mm. Yeah. But uh, of course, uh, yeah. Start simple, uh, don't be too ambitious. Uh, so immediately you get instruction, sit down, or you want to see everything clearly. Uh, you want to see Magapala Nibbana already. Uh, uh, not possible. Uh, you want just to discern Anicca Dukkha Anatta. Uh, so uh, you need to work very hard. Okay, so, uh, so you start simple. Okay. Uh, how do you start simple? Simply by noting. Yeah? So when rising occur, you're not rising. Uh, you make effort uh, to feel clearly uh, the rising movement from beginning to the end. 
Okay, so you can follow it continuously, note it clearly from beginning to the end. Uh, so right there, you have clear comprehension of the rising. Uh, simple, right? <laughs> uh, but this is just the beginning. Uh, uh, so same thing, uh, when rising, uh, when falling uh, occur, then you just make effort uh, to note the falling, uh, note it. Put your mind there, feel, feel the falling movement continuously you know, from beginning to the end. Uh, make effort to feel it as clearly as you can. Uh, then right there, you have clear comprehension of falling movement. Okay, So in this way, you not continuously uh, each rising, each falling, each rising, each falling again and again, one after another. You make effort. To note clearly, to follow, to feel clearly, yeah, from beginning to the end. Yeah. Okay, so, so you, so you note one object at a time. Okay, uh, don't be too ambitious. Just note one object, uh, one rising, then after that one falling, then one rising, one falling. Okay, with each object you make effort uh, to feel it uh, as clearly as you can. Yeah? So you build up the clear comprehension, one object at a time, one noting at a time. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, so one noting only, not one object. Okay, uh, so, mm, so you start simple uh, in this way. Okay, so not just rising, falling, so you're not rising, you're not falling, you know clearly rising, you know clearly falling. A secondary object arise also. Huh? Let's say itchiness arise, uh, then prominence, so you turn your attention there. Uh, so you place your attention on the sensation of itchiness, uh, you make effort to feel it clearly. And uh, then you have clear comprehension of itchiness. Uh, so you know itchy, 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 itchy. Uh, every moment you know itchy, there's clear comprehension. Uh, so you know it until it disappear. Uh, you can see it disappear. Uh, then there's clear comprehension of the disappearance. Uh, and then you direct it back to the rising falling. Uh, uh, so you go on like this again and again and again. Uh, so one object uh, at a time. Uh, so, so you build up uh, your clear, the clear comprehension. One moment after another after another. With each object that is noted. Okay? Mm. So, with such continuous, persistent, uh, relentless, mindful noting, uh, one after another after another, uh, so the clarity of the noting uh, will gradually build up. Okay? So, mm, uh, as it builds up, uh, so the nature uh, of object that is noted, the nature of the mental physical phenomena present uh, in every object uh, also become clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay? Mm. Then gradually uh, you will experience in turn uh, first the sabbawa lakana uh, specific characteristic uh, of uh, various mental physical phenomena. Uh, then from there uh, you begin to discern uh, the nature of arising and disappearing, uh, sankata lakana. And then from there, gradually, you arrive at the nature of impermanent suffering, non-self, uh, samanya lakana. Okay. It's gradual. Okay, so, so through persistent, continuous practice, uh, the mind becomes clearer and clearer. Okay, so, <clears throat> so this is like, uh, uh, one of the simile I talked about previously, yeah, like polishing a mirror. Right? So in a mirror full of stain, full of dust, uh, you want to see your image on the mirror, it's not clear. Uh, so you must polish the mirror. Right? So you take a piece of cloth, you wipe it. Uh, so you wipe it one time, it's not enough. You wipe it one time, you remove a little bit stain, a little bit dust. Uh, and you look at it, it's still not clear. Uh, so, what do you do? Uh, you 
repeatedly polish it. Again and again, you polish, polish, polish. Every time you polish, you remove more and more stain, uh, more and more dust. Uh, until finally all the stain, all the dust remove. And then you look at your image. It's reflected clearly on the mirror. Uh, so the mind is also uh, the same. Right? Initially, it's full of defilements. Uh, it's like the dust, uh, the stain. Okay? Uh, so you, do, you, you need to purify it. Uh, through the method uh, of satipatthana. Uh, so again and again, anupasana, you, uh, you put your mind there, you not, 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 not. Okay? So every time you not, uh, you purify the mind. Okay? So the mind becomes more and more purified, and it becomes clearer and clearer. Uh, so uh, and it becomes clear enough. Uh, so when all the mental defilements have been completely uh, purified, suppressed uh, through development of Kanika Samadhi. Uh, uh, then the uh, object will appear clearly. Uh, as, you, as you carry on practicing, it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer uh, until it becomes luminous. Also. Uh, so, <clears throat> Okay, now, <clears throat> so in the commentary, uh, they classify this Sampajanya, a clear comprehension, into uh, four kinds, uh, four kinds of clear comprehension. Okay? So, uh, Sataka Sampajanya, uh, Sapaya Sampajanya, Gojara Sampajanya, Asamoha Sampajanya. Okay, so, so let's look at this four. So the first one, Sataka Sampajanya. So this means clear comprehension of uh, clear comprehension of what is beneficial. Okay, so, yeah, so this means uh, the clarity of mind. Uh, that considers clearly uh, whether uh, something is beneficial or not. Okay, so uh, so this means uh, that uh, uh, before you do anything, before you say anything, or before you make use of something, uh, so you consider uh, with a clear mind, uh, with clarity of mind, uh, uh, whether it is beneficial or not, what you are going to do, what you are going to say, what you are going to use, is it beneficial or not? So you, so you consider uh, with clarity of mind, with a clear mind. Uh, so clear mind here means uh, uh, mind without defilements, without likes and dislikes. So you consider objectively, okay, without any likes or dislikes, okay, what is, whether it is beneficial. Uh, beneficial here means, uh, in the case of the yogi, means it is, is it beneficial for the practice or not? Uh, practice, practice of vipassana meditation, okay, is it beneficial for it or not? Is it, does it serve the purpose of the practice or not? So, uh, so serving the purpose of practice means, uh, does it help in the development of mindfulness, in the development of concentration, in the development of clear insight? Uh, so does it help or not? Uh, is it beneficial towards this end or not? Okay, so you consider clearly, uh, objectively, <laughs> uh, based on the practice yeah, without any likes and dislikes. Sometimes you consider things you likes and dislike, then you become biased. Yeah, so you must consider without any defilements, any likes and dislikes, yeah, based solely on whether it is helpful to the practice or not. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and then, t- so once you consider, uh, then t- uh, you only do uh, what you want to do, or say what, what you want to say, or use what you want to use, uh, if you find that it is beneficial. Uh, it serves the pr- purpose of the practice. Okay? Mm. Yeah. So, uh, take for example, uh, so you consider, uh, so should I go for a retreat or should I go for a holiday? Uh, <laughs> so I have some leaf. Uh, so I have to clear my leaf. Uh, every year you have to clear your leaf. Right? Or maybe if you are a teacher, school teacher, your yeah, school holiday, uh, so you are free. And then you consider, uh, should I go for a holiday or should I go for a retreat? Uh, which will you choose? Uh, so you consider, which one more beneficial for the practice? Uh, so your choice is very clear. Uh, so uh, if you are a real yogi, <laughs> You go choose to go for a retreat huh? instead of a holiday. Holiday does not help you to develop your practice, uh, so it's not beneficial. So you say, I won't go for a holiday, huh? so I must go for a retreat. Uh, then you are a good yogi. <laughs> huh? So <clears throat> uh, then you consider is making effort beneficial? To the practice, uh, 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 you have practiced before, you know very clearly it is beneficial for the practice. You don't make effort, uh, some yogis, you know, just sit there, want to enjoy the peace, the calm, uh, very nice. Uh, so uh, don't make effort uh, to explore into the nature of the mental physical phenomena. Uh, this is not beneficial for the practice. Uh, so, it's, so making effort in the practice, uh, to not continuously, uh, to not clearly uh, to allow the mind uh, to explore into the nature of the mental physical phenomena. Uh, this is beneficial for the practice. Okay. Mm. So, so you consider in this way whether it's beneficial or not. Uh, so, slowing down uh, in, a pra- in a retreat, slowing down, is it beneficial in uh, a practice? Yes, it's very beneficial. Uh, you don't slow down, and then you, you don't allow the mind uh, to sink in deep into uh, the activity uh, that you are doing to explore, to see clearly. Uh, the mental physical process uh, that is involved uh, in every physical activity. Uh, so if you stretch your arm, you just stretch like that. Uh, you cannot observe anything, right? So you cannot observe. Can you observe how the mental physical activity taking place moment by moment? Uh, so, mm, so slowing down is beneficial. When you slow down, you put your attention there. And then you can observe moment by moment uh, the intention, the movement, the intention, the movement, the intention, the movement, moment by moment as you stretch slowly. Uh, Then uh, your clear comprehension uh, of this mental physical process uh, that takes place. Otherwise, you just stretch like that, (laughs) nothing. Uh, There's no clear comprehension. Right? Mm. So slow down. Uh, so this is beneficial uh, for the practice. Mm. So mm. Uh, then uh, thinking <laughs> is it beneficial for the practice? Uh, so <clears throat> of course uh, not beneficial. Uh, so yeah, as much as uh, uh, a lot of people would like to think. Uh, sometimes because uh, we personal we say you must develop clear understanding of the nature of nama rupa. So most people uh, who have never practiced vipassana and don't have any experience, deep experience or insight before. 
the only way they know how to understand things is by thinking right but yet uh, in vipassana meditation you must refrain from that from thinking about what you are experiencing because when you think about it you are interfering uh, with the process of observation uh, with the process of knowing okay as we say uh, wisdom insight is simply knowing okay? knowing but knowing clearly okay so but if you start to think about it then you interrupt uh, the process of knowing okay so to develop wisdom you must allow the mind to observe very deeply observe continuously uh, so that the knowing of the object continue moment by moment by moment uh, as it knows continuously it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer uh, when it get, become clearer and clearer and clearer then the understanding uh, arise intuitively okay uh, so uh, but when you start to think, start to analyze, you interrupt with this process. Uh, so, uh, so you, so you disturb uh, the the unfolding uh, of the clarity of the mind. Okay, so thinking is not beneficial uh, to practice a vipassana meditation. Mm. So. What about talking? Huh? So, talking generally is not helpful, huh? especially you talk about worldly things. Huh? You tend to get distracted. Huh? Uh, gossip. <laughs> huh? All the worldly matters. You'd be surprised. Even in a meditation retreat, some yogis still indulge in this. Huh? Gossips. <laughs> and gossip about other yogis. <laughs> So, um, about worldly matters also. Huh? Uh, the food today, yeah, not very nice. Yesterday, better. <laughs> yeah, so, you see, worldly matters. Huh? So, yeah, this, of course, is not helpful. Huh? So, uh, but there are times uh, when talking is necessary during a retreat. Huh? When is that? <laughs> Huh? Uh, yes, huh? during interview. Huh? Of course, when you come for interview, you must talk. <laughs> What's the point of coming in the interview and you don't talk? Noble silence, sit there, <laughs> meditate. <laughs> huh? Then you must well stay in the hall, no need to come for interview. <laughs> so when you come for interview, uh, you must discuss the Dhamma uh, with the meditation teacher. Huh? So. So you must report clearly uh, your practice. Uh, so, so when you report, uh, there must be mindfulness and clear comprehension. Uh, mindfulness to hold the mind steady. Uh, uh, then clear comprehension uh, so that you can recollect your experience clearly. Uh, then with this mindfulness and this clear comprehension, uh, then you can report your experience clearly, systematically. Uh, so that uh, what you report reflects clearly what you experience during your practice. So when you can report clearly in this way, then the teacher have a clear idea about the state of your practice uh, right now. Uh, so you don't report clearly, uh, you jump here and jump there, uh, no mindfulness, no clear comprehension. Uh, so uh, mix here and mix there, you know. Sometimes yogi uh, even bring in their practice from 10 years ago and report. <laughs> it doesn't reflect the state of your practice right now. <laughs> uh, so sometimes they don't tell you, you know, that it's from 10 years ago, they just report. <laughs> uh, so until you probe them, then only they tell you, oh, actually this is from 10 years ago. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so during the interview, you must speak. Uh, you must speak with mindfulness and clear comprehension. Uh, then only the interview process is beneficial. 
because you don't if you don't report your practice clearly your the teacher cannot understand your practice clearly then he cannot give you instruction properly so but if you can report clearly and the teacher understand the state of your practice clearly then he can he can he or she can give you the instruction that is suited to the state of your practice at that moment Mm. Uh, so you must talk <laughs> during the interview and of course if you have any doubts any questions you need to raise uh, to clear your doubt and uh, so uh, provided there's time uh, during the interview <laughs> uh, so uh, but now we have a lot of time during the interview uh, because uh, so few of you are here yeah, so, um, <clears throat> sometimes, uh, last time when there are so many yogis and 10 minutes, <laughs> yeah, so no time to ask questions usually. Yeah, so, um, that's why sometimes uh, during the, at the end of the Dhamma talk, we give time for, for the yogi to ask questions. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so... So during the interview, uh, it's, it's beneficial to talk uh, because that's the time when you're discussing the Dhamma, uh, the Dhamma with your teacher. Okay? And this is beneficial. Okay? Mm. So, but such discussion uh, should be dis confined only to the interview. Okay? Don't discuss the Dhamma uh, outside of the interview uh, with other yogis. Uh, so... Now, sometimes uh, yogis, uh, they reach a certain stage of the practice. Uh, they want so much to share the Dhamma with other people. Uh, so then they see their fellow yogis, they uh, catch <laughs> to the side. Uh, and then sometimes force them to sit down. <laughs> and then they talk. Uh, and they share the Dhamma. They think this is beneficial. Yeah, but so, usually I find that... Uh, the, the other yogis end up more confused. <laughs> so, because each yogi that experiences different, they are at different stages of their practice. So you, you share with them something that is not relevant to their practice at that moment. They can become confused. So, how come you got this experience? I don't have. <laughs> so, so, Mm. So that's why uh, we discourage yogi uh, from discussing Dhamma among yourself. Mm. So for yogis, uh, especially when you are in a retreat, okay. So uh, everything uh, that you do, everything uh, that you want to say, uh, <clears throat> and uh, whatever you want to use. Before uh, you do it, or you say it, or you use it, uh, you must consider uh, so whether it is beneficial. Consider with a clear mind okay, whether it is beneficial. When you are meditating continuously, usually your mind is very clear. Uh, so you consider with that clear mind uh, uh, whether it is beneficial for the practice or not. Does it serve? purpose of the practice or not. Yeah? And you do it uh, only if it is beneficial. Uh, otherwise, you ex you refrain from it. Okay? Yeah. If it is not beneficial, it is considered a distraction from the practice. Okay? Mm. Yeah, so you must consider first. Uh, so, but however, uh, uh, in a retreat, uh, so this can also be a kind of distraction by itself. Because even though you are considering things with a clear mind, with clear, with clear comprehension, but still it is a kind of thinking. Such consideration is a kind of thinking. So, so you do it too much, then it becomes a distraction from the practice itself. Okay, so you should uh, try to minimize it also. Uh, so don't over consider things. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So that's why it's easier if you just 
uh, follow the basic instruction, the practice, follow the rules and regulations set up uh, in the center. Okay? So you follow this, you follow the routine of meditation in the uh, meditation center. Uh, so you just follow this. Uh, all these are set up in such a way uh, that they are beneficial to the practice of the yogi. So you just conform with them. Uh, then you don't have to consider so much. Uh, and you can just focus on your practice. Okay? Mm. So things become uh, simpler. Okay? Mm. Okay. Second one is Sapaya Sampajanya. Uh, this clear comprehension uh, of suitability. Considering clearly in your mind uh, whether it's suitable or not. Uh, so this follows after the first one, uh, Sataka Sampajanya. Uh, so after you have considered whether something is beneficial or not. Uh, so, so if you decide that it is beneficial, uh, then uh, you should not you should not immediately do it. Uh, you must consider further whether it is beneficial, yes, but is it suitable or not uh, at that moment? Uh, at that present moment, is it suitable or not? Okay. So, for example, going for a retreat, uh, yes, it's very suitable, it's beneficial for the practice. Uh, so, but if let's say at that time uh, in the retreat center, there is uh, some kind of celebration going on. Uh, we sat day or katina. Uh, so many people around. So ma so much activity going on. Uh, a lot of noise. A lot of funfair uh, going on. Then at that time it is not suitable. Uh, or if that time there are some other activities, uh, uh, some center that the samanera program. Uh, all the children running around, <laughs> making a lot of noise. So how to meditate like this? So that's why meditation center should not have Samanera program. So there are many other centers who already have Samanera program. Let them do it. Why should meditation center have Samanera program? So. Uh, should create an environment suitable for yogis uh, uh, so with as little distraction as possible yeah so uh, but if there are such activities at the center at that time then it's not suitable uh, then you should consider going to another center uh, so yeah so another one let's say making effort uh, is very beneficial to the practice. You must make effort. However, if let's say uh, your mind is already very restless uh, or very tense, then at that time uh, it is no longer suitable to add more effort into the practice, yeah, into the noting mind. Uh, you must reduce uh, the effort uh, in order to balance it. Okay? Mm. So, uh, slowing down uh, may be beneficial, but let's say you're in a lunch queue, uh, so many yogis behind you, and then you go there stretching, 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 five minutes to stretch, <laughs> uh, to take the food. Uh, that is not suitable. Uh, uh, you must speed up a bit. Speed up, but still maintain your mindfulness and clear comprehension. Yeah. Otherwise, all the yogis behind waiting, uh, and then they have to not anger, anger, anger. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so you have to consider uh, suitability, uh, suitability of object also. Uh, sometimes uh, nowadays, many yogis like to do chitta nupasana. Uh, I keep getting this request again and again to explain chitta nupasana. Uh, so. Yeah, but when the mind is not sufficiently developed yet, uh, there's no sufficient mindfulness and concentration. Uh, the, the noting mind uh, still not 
continuous enough. Uh, the mindful noting is not continuous enough, not, uh, not clear enough such that it can note clearly and continuously, moment by moment by moment by moment. Uh, then at that time, it's not suitable yet uh, to do Chitta Nupasana. Uh, so, uh, so you must develop the strength of the noting mind first. Uh, once it's sufficiently developed, then only you can do Chitta Nupasana. Mm. Yeah, so suitability uh, must be considered. Yeah? So, mm. so these first two kinds of clear comprehension, uh, sataka and sapaya sampajanya, considering what is beneficial, what is suitable. Okay. Mm. So uh, actually, they are kind of thinking. Uh, so you are thinking with a clear mind, considering uh, whether it's beneficial, whether it's suitable. Uh, so such consideration are needed, uh, especially during a retreat, uh, in order to keep away from what is unbeneficial, uh, keep away from unbeneficial distraction from the practice, and also uh, to keep the practice going on smoothly by avoiding what is unsuitable. Okay. Mm. But they are still thinking, even though you are thinking, considering with a clear mind, it, they are still nevertheless just thinking. Huh? So, and so you should keep them to a bare minimum. Okay? So the best, as you say, eh, just follow the rules, regulation, the basic instruction, follow them. Eh? And also get into a routine eh, during your retreat. Once you get into a routine, then every day you just follow the same routine. Then you don't have to think and consider so much. Okay? Mm. So then things become simpler. Huh? And then you can just focus on the practice. Okay? Mm. Third one is, uh, uh, let's finish all the four. Huh? Third one is Gochara Sampajanya. Clear comprehension of domain. And domain here means the domain of the yogi. Okay. Actually, gochara means the, like the pasture. Huh? It's, uh, literally, it means like go, actually, means the cow. <laughs> huh? Lambu, <laughs> cow. Uh, so gochara means where the cow goes to graze. So the pasturing ground, uh, is it right? The pasture. Uh, so it's where the cow go and go to eat. The, that means the grass field. Uh, that's gochara. Okay. Uh, so it's the domain, uh, domain of the cow. Here, but here it means the domain of the yogi. Uh, where the yogi go and feed. Uh, so where does the yogi go and feed when you practice? Uh, the mind fits out of the four objects, the four satipatthana objects, uh, the body, the feeling, uh, consciousness, and the dhamma. Uh, so these four, these are the domain of the yogi. Uh, so so gochara sampajanya means applying clear comprehension uh, within these four objects. So you always keep your mind noting uh, with mindfulness and clear comprehension these four objects. Okay, so you don't allow the mind to stray outside of these four objects. Okay, because outside of these four objects uh, is not the domain of the yogi. Uh, it's the domain of Mara. <laughs> So if you fall outside of these four objects, that means you stop noting. There's a break in your noting, break in the continuity of the noting. Uh, then when you're not noting, uh, then uh, you fall into the domain of Mara. Uh, so, uh, so when you fall, stop noting, uh, you fall under the influence of avijja. You don't note clearly with mindfulness and clear comprehension. Then the mind comes under the influence of avijja, ignorance. Uh, uh, so, uh, so when you 
and it's under the influence of ignorance and uh, experiencing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, knowing, thinking. Uh, everything is very nice. Uh, everything is very beautiful. Uh, you experience them as permanent, as pleasurable, as a self. Uh, so it's wonderful experience. Seeing is good. Seeing is wonderful. I like seeing. Uh, uh, I like hearing. Uh, so, uh, so that craving arise. Uh, so when Abhijja, the Stanha, uh, uh, so when the craving becomes strong, uh, and then there's Upadana, uh, clinging, okay, grabs strongly to the object, uh, grabs at it, cling to it uh, with strong craving. Uh, and sometimes you cling to it uh, with wrong view of a self. Okay? Mm. So, this is the domain of Mara. Uh, so, so, yogi must keep the mind, the noting mind, continuously within uh, the domain of these four objects. Uh, so, this means continuity of mindfulness, uh, noting continuously uh, these four objects, one after another, moment after moment after moment. So, with a clear mind, uh, applying clear comprehension, you remain within these four objects. So basically, actually, this is applying mindfulness and clear comprehension continuously. It's anupasana. Okay? Mm. And then the last one is asamoha sambhajanya. Uh, clear comprehension of non-delusion. Okay, so non-delusion basically means insight. Uh, insight itself uh, is non-delusion. Uh, so it is this insight uh, that discerns clearly the nature uh, of the Nama Rupa. Okay? Mm. Yeah. And this is this clear comprehension of non-delusion, this insight. This is what the yogi is uh, striving to develop uh, in a practice. Okay? Mm. So the previous three Sampajanya uh, the sataka, sapaya, gochara. Uh, they, they are like a support uh, that builds up to this final uh, asamoha sampajanya. Okay? It's clear comprehension of non-delusion. Okay? It is this clear comprehension of non-delusion, insight uh, into the nature of impermanent suffering, non-self. Uh, that that the Buddha meant uh, when he says uh, atapi sampajano satima. Uh, so sampajano, the mind, the noting mind must be possessed of this clear comprehension. Uh, so it is this clear comprehension and non-delusion uh, that must accompany uh, every moment uh, when you note the object. There must be this clear discernment of the nature of the mental physical phenomena, seeing clearly uh, into the nature of impermanent suffering and non-self. Uh, it is this insight uh, that leads to liberation. Okay, mm. okay uh, so these four kinds uh, of clear comprehension. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so Uh, so the first two kinds uh, help to keep away from what is unbeneficial, what is unsuitable. Uh, so, so the third one, uh, the domain, uh, helps keep the mind continuously noting uh, uh, the object, yeah, the nama rupa, the four satipatthana object. Okay, and. And the last one uh, is the final result, okay? Clear comprehension of non-delusion, okay? Mm. So the first three uh, helps to bring up the third, the fourth, Sampajanya, okay? Mm. Okay, uh, we stop here today. Uh, <coughs> there is a question, uh, uh, Mante, a more prominent itchiness appear while I am noting an existing itchiness. 
Uh, sometimes it is so prominent that my mind will automatically switch to note the new itchiness. Uh, shall I pull it back to the first one till it disappear? Only then I go to note the prominent, the more prominent one. Uh, so sometimes you cannot help it uh, because it's so prominent, it immediately pulls your attention there. Uh, uh, so then you have to note uh, the more prominent one. Okay. Mm. Sometimes it's just like just slightly more prominent, uh, and then if your noting mind is strong enough, uh, you can still hold on to the existing one. Then you stay with the existing one. Okay, so it doesn't pull it immediately away. Uh, so then you stay with the existing one. Uh, Bhante, could you please elaborate on Nama Rupa? Uh, nama is mind, mentality, feeling, perception, volition, action, and consciousness. And Rupa is a mere form of materiality. Uh, so, no, it's just, put it very simply, uh, it's just mental, physical nature. Right? Physical nature, uh, very simple. Uh, hardness, softness, heat, cold, uh, roughness, smoothness, tension, stiffness, tightness, pressure. Uh, all this are uh, physical nature. Uh, that's rupa. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so what the nature uh, that the mind experiences directly. Uh, so, uh, so, for example, when you stretch your arm forward, uh, then you can feel as you put your attention there, uh, you can feel uh, there's the, that tightness, the tension, uh, the pushing, uh, so the heaviness, uh, there's all this uh, nature, uh, physical nature. Okay? Uh, but not the arm. Uh, the arm is an idea. No, although we usually sometimes we say rupa, uh, nama rupa, we say mind and body. Uh, but say rupa means uh, not the, not body, okay? Not the arm, not the legs, not. The, uh, it's just nature, physical nature. Uh, so when you stretch like this, all you feel is all this physical nature, uh, tightness, tension, heaviness, and so on. Uh, the idea of a, that there is an arm there is something that y your the mind overlay on this experience. Okay? So uh, when you experience it directly, uh, there's no arm. Uh, there, there's just all this different nature. Right? So uh, but if you're not observing Carefully, uh, according to the method of vipassana, usually the, the mind takes all these different nature, uh, put them together, and then identify this whole thing. Uh, this is my arm. <laughs> uh, but this, this is just an idea that the mind put together and overlay on the bare experience. Okay, so nature means this bare experience. Oh, this physical nature. Okay. Mm. Uh, so nama uh, is, is similarly mental nature, right? So nature of knowing, uh, nature of perceiving, recognizing, feeling, and so on. Okay. Mm. Uh, so this various mental nature also. Uh, if your mind is clear enough, you can experience them uh, when you're not an experience. Okay. So this is Nama Rupa. So could you please elaborate on how to note volition action? What do you mean volition action? Do you mean the intention behind the action? Hmm. Yeah. If it is intention behind the action, yeah, so yeah, mind must be very clear. Huh? So before uh, any physical action, there's always an intention. Yeah? Because the intention 
Right, there's the movement. Okay, mm. so it, it usually occurs this very uh, subtle urge uh, in the mind. Uh, it's like an under undercurrent, uh, a very subtle undercurrent that moves the mind, uh, sort of push it in a certain way. Uh, it appears like an urge uh, to do something. Uh, so, for example, uh, when you, when you come, as you walk uh, towards the door, uh, the moment you come close enough to the door, if you are observing continuously, moment by moment, uh, your mindfulness is going on, noting, uh, you find that when you come close enough to the door, automatically uh, there's a this subtle urge arise in the mind uh, for you to reach for the door knob. Right? If you don't observe this carefully enough, you'll miss it. Uh, then you wonder, how come my, ha my hand automatically reach up? Uh, uh, if you, that's why you must do things slowly. You slow down and then you observe moment by moment by moment. Uh, then your mind is very clear, sensitive, alert. Uh, the moment this intention arises, uh, immediately you can pick it up. So you can uh, then you then you note that as intention. Uh, so that's how you note uh, the intention. Uh, noting intention is not uh, you sit there uh, wait for intention to come out. <laughs> uh, intention don't come out. Then you just simply say intention, intention, <laughs> and then you do it. That is not noting intention because you don't really see the, clearly the intention, right? Uh, so you must see clearly that intention is there. Then you not. Vipassana, when we not, that means we not the object that is there. You know, rising occur, then we not rising. Uh, falling occur, then we not the falling. Uh, not that uh, we deliberately cause the rising to occur uh, and then uh, rising, rising, rising. <laughs> yeah. mm. So rising occur, we're not rising. Uh, so the mind just sit back and then uh, whatever appear, uh, then it not uh, rising occur, you not rising. Falling occur, you not falling. Thinking occur, you not thinking. Thinking disappear, you uh, know thinking disappear. Uh, then you direct it back. Sensation occur, pain occur, and then you know, pain, pain, pain. Huh? So, uh, so intention occur, then you know intention. Uh, so, uh, not what is there, uh, not what is not there. Uh, Bante, I miss one of the four objects in the Gochara domain. Please advise. So it's the four satipatthana objects. Uh, so body, kaya, uh, vedana, feeling, consciousness, citta. Last one is dhamma. Uh, dhamma means just general, generally, uh, mental physical phenomena. Okay? Nama, rupa, dhamma, uh, mental physical nature. <coughs> <clears throat> ah, that's a good question. Huh? How do you discern motive from intention and intention from impulse? Hmm? Yeah, so intention is actually, you can say, is impulse. Huh? Uh, it's an impulsion to do this, to do that. Okay. Hmm. Whereas when you say motive, motive have a very, something like a very clear motivation behind it. So whether it's a wholesome motivation or unwholesome motivation, yeah? so there's motive. So <clears throat> if unwholesome motivation, it comes with the defilements. Yeah? So mm, wholesome motivation, yeah? so it comes with a beautiful state of mind. Yeah? So <clears throat> detachment, uh, or kindness, compassion, and so on. 
So when we say intention, uh, it's a very simple impulsion uh, to do this, to do that. Okay? Like when you want to open the door. Uh, so you don't say that I have the motive <laughs> to open the door, right? Uh, yeah, the motive to rob the bank, yes. But <laughs> open the door is something so simple. It's just an impulsion. Okay? So it's something very simple. Mm. Just uh, some very subtle urge in the mind to do this, to do that. Okay? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, during meditation setting, it's easy to note volition. But in daily life, how to note clearly? <laughs> yeah, in meditation retreat, of course, very easy because uh, you slow down. When you slow down and you're noting moment after moment after moment, the intention can appear very clearly. Yeah? That's why you can even see uh, the series of intention as you stretch the arm. Uh, intention, intention, intention. There's intention and movement, intention, movement, intention, movement. Okay, uh, but outside retreat is very difficult. Huh? Uh, you cannot slow down like this. Uh, people will say there's a zombie <laughs> walking. Huh? Uh, some people will say what? Chao for ya more. So, <clears throat> yeah. But if you are actually, if you are, your habit of mindfulness is very strong, sometimes you can. Huh? So if you have trained your mind uh, to see clearly, huh? uh, especially those yogis who have done many, many retreats, huh? so the, the habit of mindfulness is so strong. Yes, yeah, sometimes even in daily life, huh, you can observe intention. Not as much as during a retreat, but still you can generally still observe intention before you open the door, before you sit down, before you do any action. Often you can feel this urge because your mind, you train your mind to be so sensitive to all these different mental states that arise. And so when intention pops up, uh, Im immediately uh, you are aware of it. Okay? Mm. okay, that's all the question in the chat room. Okay, so <clears throat> if there's no other question. Uh, Bhante, can I ask the uh, questions? Yes. Uh, Okay, uh, let's say we do uh, exercise. So mm. there are uh, a lot of movement, including arms and legs. So, and then we do it concurrently. It seems like we are doing it concurrently. Uh, you know, like I, I don't feel, I, sometimes it's like, uh, if I focus on the arms, then I, I cannot seem to focus on the legs. So what's your advice on this? <laughs> You mean in a retreat or outside a retreat? Outside, outside retreat. retreat. <laughs> yeah, outside a retreat, you don't. <laughs> you just exercise. Uh, huh? And just because when you exercise, um, I think most kind of exercise you have to do like several movements at the same time, right? Uh, like if yep. let's say you do Tai Chi, uh, so uh, there's several mm -hmm. movements at a time. So you just be aware as much as you can, okay? Mm. Uh, so, uh, or if there's two movement, uh, then you have just focus on one movement. Okay. Yeah? So, usually in mm. outside of a retreat, uh, when your movement is so fast and you want to be aware, uh, uh, it's not possible to be aware of one movement at a time yeah, because you are doing so many movements. Yeah. So one way you can do is that, uh, but this one you have to learn how to uh, be aware from the mind door. Yeah. So this means you keep your awareness at the mind door. Yeah. Yeah. How to keep awareness at the mind door? You simply uh, be aware of what the mind is knowing. Yeah? 
Uh, you can yeah. ask this question, what does the mind know now? Uh, yeah. Automatically, when you ask this question, your, your attention goes to the mind. Uh, uh, that is mm -hmm. called being aware at the mind door. Uh, so if you keep your attention at the mind door, everything goes through the mind door. Right? So everything you mean we you observe the mind? Bhante, we observe the mind, what's the mm -hmm. mind's thinking? What the mind knows. Oh, okay. So let's observe the mind. See how uh, the mind is still yes. focused on the hands or focus on the legs. Yeah. So basically, you keep your attention on the mind. Then whatever objects uh, goes through the mind, you're also aware, right? Because everything that you experience goes through the mind uh, from all the senses. Okay. We see something through the eye, and it goes through the eye door, but immediately it reflects in the mind door. Uh, you hear a sound. Uh, to the ear door, immediately that reflects at the mind door. Uh, so everything finally uh, reflects at the mind door. So you just hold your attention at the mind door, and then you know everything. Uh, you move your arm, you know the movement. Uh, you move your leg, you, the mind also know the movement. Uh, so, so you just keep your attention there, uh, and then you will, you'll be able to catch all the different movement, but it's very fast, uh, uh, so you cannot note one by one by one. Uh, you have to like just generally uh, hold your attention there, and then just mm. observe as much as you can. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. That's it, you know, outside of retreat, uh, but inside a mm. retreat, uh, we don't mm. encourage you to exercise. Yeah. <laughs> and do all these different activities uh, just focus mm. on your practice mm. okay. uh, one day so mm. when i do the sitting i realized today let's say you know uh first i sat down so i say i want to focus on the abdomen so then mm. i focus on the abdomen i see it rising and falling after that it become my chest is more prominent the rising and falling then mm. the then I say okay. Then I focus on the chest. After mm. that, I realize that my breath is more prominent. So mm. it seems like so. Should I say like you know I must throughout the sitting if I decided to focus on the abdomen. So throughout the sitting, I must focus on the abdomen. Whether I can feel the abdomen or I cannot feel, I still need to strive just to focus on that. Yeah, if is uh, how to say, try to hold your attention eh, on one place, okay? Mm. But if the rising falling eh, becomes not clear there, but it appear eh, somewhere else or in the chest, eh, then eh, you shift your attention there. Okay? Uh, so uh, as long as you can hold your attention in that place eh, for uh, a considerable duration of time. Okay. Considerable. Not, not one minute here, one minute there, jump here and there, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you can, if it's like on the abdomen, then maybe it's there like uh, ten minutes, uh, like that or twenty minutes. Uh, then after that, after a while, maybe uh, because changes in your manner of breathing, then it appear more clearly on the chest. And then you then you shift it there, and then it's there for uh, a long period of time. You can hold it continuously there uh, for a period of time. Then it's okay. Mm, mm, okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah. not, you know, one minute here, one minute there. Uh, so mm. that become very like uh, destructive. Mm, mm. 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 Yeah. So, uh, Bhante, uh do we need to discern the thinking and imagination? Then suddenly, I know think, thinking, thinking. Then I realize that, oh, this is not thinking. This is imagine. So should I change the note to the imagine, imagine, imagine? Oh. Huh? Uh, actually, uh, you can continue just using the thinking. Huh? So as long as you know that you are noting it, Actually, the of course the label ideally should reflect the object. 
Okay, uh, but what is more important is that you are noting. That means the mind is with the object, experiencing it clearly. So, okay. so Bhante, mm -hmm. then, it, then meanings that I actually don't need to use the word at all. If I know that I'm thinking, then I say. In the beginning, it's better to use uh, because mm -hmm. it helps you. To, it helps to uh, keep the mind on the object. Mm. Okay. So mm. what I'm saying is that uh, you don't have to change the label. Uh, if you realize that it is uh, imagining uh, instead of thinking, uh, uh, then first you should not imagining it. I mean, sorry, uh, realizing, realizing. Okay. Imagine means realize. No. You, because oh, you the first realize, is not, oh, oh, I realize yeah, that, is not, that is thinking, oh, okay. right? Uh, then you mm -hmm. realize, yeah. okay. then, then you should note that also, because that is a state of mind, uh, realizing, so you note it, realizing, realizing. Mm. Uh, okay, and then after that, uh, then you can, if you want, you can note it as imagining, imagining. Mm. Okay, uh, mm. if it is still there. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, then you can note it as imagining, imagining. So the most important thing is that your mind is noting, I means with the object, experiencing it clearly. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Whatever it is that arises. Okay? Bhante, mm. is it uh, more beneficial if every time we think so much, the mind, if you keep on noting the mind, the mind has a lot of thinking to do. Is it beneficial if we have occasion, we say, you know, focus on the like abdomen again. Try not to think. Try not to imagine, but focus back on the object, like abdomen. When thinking occur, uh, so we must, uh, as we described last time, uh, put all effort into noting the thinking. Uh, put the effort into the noting, uh, not into the thinking. <laughs> uh, you put the effort into the noting of the thinking. Uh, then all your energy goes to the Noting, uh, not to the thinking, and uh, then the thinking will stop by itself. Mm. But Bhante, okay. I have yeah. this experience that whereby if I force the mind back to the object, uh, mm. this is not sitting, but this is on daily life. I force the mind instead of noting, say thinking, thinking. I just divert it back to the abdomen or to the breathing and breathe out. It it just the thinking just go away. Mm. Yeah, but uh, it may go away, huh? but if you force it like this, huh? so it may still be in the background of the mind. Huh? Uh, so it's better huh, to try to note until it disappears. Uh, so, uh, but in the beginning, uh, often when the beginner note, thinking, 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 huh? it doesn't stop. <laughs> Uh, that's because uh, the noting mind is not sufficiently developed yet. Okay, so mm. the, so the thinking is more overwhelming. Uh, so so you note for a few times. Uh, not thinking, thinking, thinking. Really put effort into the noting. Okay, but if after noting for a while, let's say seven, eight times, you note, it doesn't stop. Then. Mm. Uh, you gently uh, don't force. Mm. Gently, you step away. Uh, let the mind step away from the thinking. Detach the mind from the thoughts. Gently, uh, and do this clearly. Uh, you must do this with mindfulness and clear comprehension. Uh, gently and clearly, uh, with full mindfulness, redirect it back to the rising falling. Okay, do it gently, don't force it, don't immediately pull your attention strongly away from the object and then push it back to the rising form. You have to gently redirect it back, okay? mm. gently but firmly. Okay? Mm. You do it forcefully, uh, you disturb the mind, okay? mm. disturb the composure of the mind. Mm. Okay? Mm. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, Anything? Yeah. yeah, but they, so let's say, right, in a situation, let's say we walk there to, uh, you know, 
to a hall or whatsoever. There are so many distractions on the people, you know, people talking, all the noise, everything like that. So are we, you know, supposed to note the my door or we just back to our uh, in a retreat in a retreat yes, outside keep your eyes down <laughs> and don't look uh, outside of course uh, yeah you can use the method uh, of the watching from the mind door mm -hmm. uh, just hold your attention at the mind door whatever arises uh, just be aware including uh, your mental reaction to it uh, it arises in the mind so you put your attention there you can be aware Mm. Mm. All right. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. Uh, one more question, Bante. So, if we are not sitting, uh, there's itchiness. So, impromptu, we will scratch, you know, the place where it's itchy. So, mm. uh, it, this, is, this is norm, right? I suppose. And no. then, are we supposed uh, to train it to say we yes, still yes, have to be to train like and then. Uh, first, itchiness arises, you must not itchy, itchy, itchy. Uh, intention arises, you want to scratch, you must not the intention. Uh, but don't act on it. Just know, uh, if you really know the intention, the intention will disappear. Uh, if the intention mm. disappears, uh, then you no longer want to scratch. And then mm. you continue noting itchy, itchy, itchy. Mm. Uh, so if agitation arise, not agitation, not uh, the state of agitation, not until the agitation disappear. Uh, the mind, when the agitation disappear, uh, you see uh, the mind calms down. You can see the change in the state of mind. Uh, it mm -hmm. just calms down, become peaceful again, and then mm -hmm. you go back, redirect again to the, not the itchy, mm -hmm. itchy. Uh, uh, you not okay. in this way until it disappear. Mm. Okay, yeah. so it's very late already. Yeah? Oh, yeah. So we should conclude now. Imaya Dhamma Nudhamma Pati Patiya Buddham Bujemi Imaya Dhamma Nudhamma Pati Patiya Dhammam pujemi imaya dhammanu dhamma patipatiya sangham pujemi imaya dhammanu dhamma patipatiya madapitunam pujemi Imaya Dhammanu Dhamma Patipatiya Ajariyanam Pujemi Adha Imaya Patipadaya Jaram Ranamha Primojesami Idam me punyam asawa kaya waham hodu. Idam me punyam nebanasa bajayo hodu. Idam me silam magapalanyanasa bajayo Hodu Imam no Bunya Bhagam Sabasatanam Dema Imam no Bunya Bhagam Sabasatanam Dema Imam no Bunya Bhagam Sabasatanam Dema Sadu 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 So may all of you be well, happy, and peaceful always. May all of you be safe, be healthy, 
Uh, yeah, may your practice of the Dharma uh, be smooth without any obstacle. Uh, and may you all be able to experience the unconditional peace uh, through your practice of the Dhamma. <laughs>